Hey guys, first of all, apologies on the lateness of this vlog. It's ironic that I've been talking about sleep for the past two weeks because this morning I actually slept in. I think I got about 11 hours of sleep. I woke up at about 10 o'clock and um, I guess I needed it. My body was very tired from the working out that I did yesterday and I played a bunch of tennis. So for once, I actually followed my own advice. Anyway, today I want to talk to you about 12 essential foods that I need to always have in my fridge or my pantry. Um, whenever I run out of them, I have to run out for them. So it's very interesting. I've been thinking about it for the last couple of days and my list is so different nowadays from what it was when I was in college or when I was a young mom. Um, I had a little bit confession of a Diet Coke addiction. So whenever I ran out of Diet Coke, I always had to go get some more and that's really terrible and I'm glad to say that that is no longer the case. As I said, my list is really, really different, um, but I do have, it's funny because Diet Coke is full of caffeine and my number one <laughs> food that I have to have on hand is coffee, coffee, coffee. So I, I do intermittent fasting. I do need to have a little bit of jolt, a little jolt of something in the morning. So I start my, my day with, with coffee and I don't know what I would do if I didn't have coffee in my house. Um, it's funny though because I never had coffee until I was 26. I had uh, my second child, my son Mitchell, and he was a terrible sleeper and I was super tired and the Diet Coke just was not cutting it because I wouldn't have that first thing in the morning. I did have, I did draw the line somewhere. So I started uh, drinking coffee. I can almost remember the first day. In fact, I, I can remember the first day in Kingston, Ontario in my little crappy kitchen having my first cup of coffee. Anyway, I just buy, you know, I just, I'm a big Costco fan, so I buy my coffee at Costco and um, always have to have coffee in the house. All right, that's really boring and probably everybody feels the same way, but we'll move on. Um, spinach, it's really kind of interesting. Every time I run out of spinach, I have to go to the store and get some. I use spinach in everything. I use it in my eggs. I use it in my protein shakes. I have it on its own in salad. Spinach, if you buy it like this, organic, pre-washed spinach, super convenient, full of iron, full of vitamins, and um, absolutely essential for me. So I'm happy to say that this is a super healthy item for number two. Now, when I make my protein shakes, I, I have to have all those ingredients on hand, and I have protein shakes almost every day. So I would say all of the ingredients in my protein shakes are essential. So I'm going to start with the base and I usually use a nut milk, not that I don't have dairy because um, I'm not a vegetarian or a vegan, I'm not totally opposed to dairy but I just think it's nice to have a change and there's so many great nut milks out there, it doesn't really matter um, which one but I happen to have um, cashew milk here on hand so I use that as the base for my, um, my smoothie and then I use Greek yogurt for protein. Um, I never buy the 0% yogurt, by the way. Um, I like to have some fat. It slows um, the time it takes for your body to digest the food, so you do feel full longer when you have a little bit of fat in here. Plus, when they take out the fat, they put other stuff in that's not great, so I don't like the idea of, of eating all the fillers that they put into those fat-free Foods. So I always look for 2% or even 5%, it doesn't matter to me. Greek yogurt is full of protein. Um, bananas, you can't really make a smoothie without <laughs> bananas and bananas are super cheap, um, accessible and you can always freeze the soft ripe bananas and throw them into smoothies as well but I usually just use a fresh banana and I always buy bananas when I go to the store. Um, what else do I put in my smoothies? Well, obviously berries. So um, I like to use wild blueberries. Uh, they're very high in antioxidants and um, phytochemicals, cancer-fighting chemicals. Uh, so I get my wild blueberries because they're expensive. I get them from Costco, which makes them a little bit cheaper. So there you go. And I'm gonna put these in the freezer really quickly because I've had them out for a while. So don't want them to get all thawed out. You can also throw um, avocados 
in your smoothie. I don't often do that, but I thought I would just give you guys that option because you want to put healthy fats in your smoothie and sometimes um, I'll put walnuts in as well. Walnuts are full of omega-3 fatty acids, which are anti-inflammatory. And then we already know that avocados are mono unsaturated fats. So very healthy for you, really heart healthy, full of vitamins as well. Um, you can't go wrong with these two. So I always, I always love to have avocados. They're great in salads as well. I feel like all of these foods are so versatile. You can make snacks, breakfast, lunch, whatever with them. Um, super, super convenient and super nutrient dense, but you wanna be careful with the, the fats like the avocados and walnuts because they are calorie dense as well. And if you're looking to lose weight, you do have to be a little bit careful with those, making sure that you have small amounts, okay? Um, so don't go overboard with, with having like a whole avocado, maybe just a couple slivers. Um, I told you I wasn't vegan or a vegetarian and I think salmon is just the most awesome fish. I come from the Caribbean and I wish I could get the fish that we, um, we get fresh off the boats in Barbados, but I'll, I'll take salmon any day as well. It's, this is wild Alaskan salmon. I always buy wild salmon. It's feeding, the fish are feeding on foods that are natural to them and they're you know they're not eating corn and soy out there in the ocean so they're much healthier their um, fatty acid profile is a lot better loads of omega-3s and generally much better for you so I find that Costco has the most um, inexpensive and high quality wild salmon you get about 10 steaks of individually wrap salmon for about 40 Canadian, which is actually um, pretty inexpensive. So I'm gonna put my salmon back in my freezer as well. I couldn't complete my list without talking about eggs. Eggs are complete protein, healthy fats, full of vitamins, versatile. You can have them for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. I always look for free range eggs. I do think about the ethical component of raising animals. So even though I do eat animals, I always try to buy wild or free range or whatever. And I just really hope that the labeling is correct and that I am getting what I'm paying for. Okay, last two items on my essential list are extra virgin olive oil and lemons. And if you don't have lemons, you can also use limes. So it's probably not fair to say I have to run out and buy lemons when I run out because I always have limes in my fridge as well. So I guess it's either lemons or limes. Um, I always squeeze lemon juice um, on my salads and add a little bit of olive oil. It's that simple, just a little bit of salt and pepper and I'm good to go. I use, I use olive oil for cooking and I always have to have olive oil on hand. It is extra virgin olive oil is a little bit more expensive but it tastes a lot better and I get it from Costco so it's more economical that way. Um, it's very good for your heart, heart healthy, brain healthy, lots of benefits to olive oil. So as I said, I always have this on hand and lemons or limes are not just good for salads. They're an amazing little addition to water. I drink a lot of water and it gets boring. So, you know, you squeeze a little lemon juice in there, a little lime juice and it totally changes up the flavor. Um, obviously when you're making fish, all kinds of dishes, adding a little bit of lime or lemon juice can really kind of zest things up. If I'm going to be completely honest, there are two more items that I would consider essential in my house and uh, they're both grains. I don't eat a lot of bread, but when I do, I try to eat sprouted grain bread. It is full of fiber, full of nutrients, always looking at nutrient density. There are quite a few calories per slice though, so I really don't eat a lot of it, but this is great toasted for sandwiches. And a lot of times when I'm having trouble sleeping at night, and I know it's because I didn't have enough carbohydrate, I'll toast a piece of this with a little bit of butter and it does the trick. The other thing is anyone, anyone who knows me knows that I have a, a big popcorn habit and I could eat popcorn every single night. I do make it the old fashioned way on the stove with olive oil, so it is pretty healthy and it is one of the better choices that you can make when it comes to snacks. It's full of antioxidants and fiber. 
Um, just like alcohol, I limit my popcorn consumption to weekends, so I don't feel too bad about that. Anyway, I would really love to hear from you guys. I'd love to hear what your essential foods are in your kitchen, your fridge, your pantry, whatever. And um, if you thought this was useful, please let me know. If you want to share it with a friend, it would be much appreciated. Please like it. If you're new to the channel, welcome to Short Circuits. I always post workouts on Mondays and I usually post vlogs on Wednesdays, but I'm not going to be posting a, vo a vlog next Wednesday. It is the first week of August. I'm on vacation and I need a little bit of a break. I'm not going to have access to the internet anyway. I'm just getting away from it all. I'm going to be at my cottage. I will post workouts. I have some workouts banked but I don't have any vlogs banked and um, having said that I would love to get your ideas, your thoughts on what topics you'd like me to talk about, any questions that you might have, anything that I can uh, help shed a little bit of light on. I look forward to hearing all that from you guys and until next time, take care of you, be healthy, be happy and get sweaty.